Hi, everyone, and welcome to lesson four in unit uh, one. In this lesson, what we're going to cover is the control flow in the Swift language. Um, we will talk about the if statement, uh, if else statement. We will talk about some of the logical operators, not, and, and, or. We also will discuss the switch statement. And then we will discuss, discuss the trinary uh, conditional operator. Uh, we will break this lesson into two parts, the theory part and the practical part, uh, just to manage the length of these videos because they're, trying to, uh, they're getting to, uh, to be a little long. So let's get started. I'm going to go to the keynotes. And let's get started. So in the... In the if statement, in a, why do we need condition flow in programming? Just like in real life, you need to, you have conditions and then you make decision based on these conditions. So in this example, we have, uh, we have uh, a login screen, a very common example where you log in, you try to log into an application. And if it is, if you're a valid user, if you're already registered, it will take you to the main menu or to the main screen. If you're not valid user, you can stay. You stay on the same screen, and you get uh, like an error message or to to try again and try again or reset your password. Password. Just like arithmetic operations, we have logical operators. So if I want to compare two values, I have these different options for me to compare. So for example, if I want to say something is equal to another something, so we can use this equal operator. So the two items must be equal. For this condition to be true, the two, must, the two operators must be equal. If one is not equal to the other, so not equal, this is if this condition become true. If it's great, so we have another thing called greater than, we have something called greater than or equal, we have less than, less than or equal, and then we have and conditions or or conditions and not condition. When does this happen? So if we have two conditions and I want to combine them, if we use the and statement, that means both condition must be true for the result to be true. So condition one has to be true and condition two has to be true. The other option is that we have here the or condition. The or means that one of the two conditions is true. So if one of them is true, then the result is true. And we're gonna see examples on this. The last thing that we have here, not, not what? Not whatever the condition is. So if the condition is true and you say not, it becomes false. If the condition is false and you say not, then the condition, the result is true. Let's take a look at this example. So here, when things to note here, when we use an if statement, you need to, we specify the if keyword, if, then we specify the condition afterward. And then the things, if this condition is true, we want to do something. So we have a beginning bracket here, curly bracket, and then we have an ending curly bracket here. So this code only get executed only if this condition is true. Here's the other example here. So we have a temperature equal to 100, it's a variable. We check if the temperature greater than or equal to 100, then we say the water is boiling, all right? So when does this happen? Only if this condition here is true. So is this condition is true? Is temperature greater than or equal to 100? Yes, it is because it's 100 and 100 is equal to 100. So this get executed, and then we have the water is boiling. All right, so now if we go to the next one. I need to get rid of these, and I don't know why they're here. We need, <laughs> this should be cleared. Uh, all right, clear, all right. So in here, we have another version of an if statement. This version of an if statement has two parts. 
a con when the condition is true and when the condition is false. So this get executed when the condition is true, else this get executed when the condition is false. So this is called if else statement, if else statement. So here's another example. Here's the same example we looked at before, but with additional else statement. So in here we have uh, same condition, but here we added else statement. And again, uh, curly brackets. This part will only happen. This part if this condition is false. So this condition is false. It will, it will check this condition first. If te is temperature greater than or equal to 100? Yes, it is. So we'll do this part. So it'll never go to the else statement. But let's say this is not 100 anymore. This is just, this is 99 or 90, right? So what happens now here? Instead of, uh, instead of 100, it's 90. So is 90 greater than or equal to 100? It is not. So what do we do? This condition is false now. It's not true anymore. It will skip this condition and it will go to the else statement. Why? Because this condition is false and it will go to the else statement and it will print the water is not boiling. Okay? Because the condition changed based on the value that the new value. Okay? So let's go to the next uh, the next uh, slide. Now, you could have Boolean variables. What is a Boolean variable? A Boolean variable, we've seen one before, which is you can put either false or true in it. That's the only two values you can put in it. And in this case, you could have a Boolean variable. Uh, in this case, you could have a Boolean variable based on the result of this. So, it says we have a number equal to a thousand. It says if let is a small number equal to the result of this condition. This is number less than 10. Is it less than 10? No, of course not, because this is actually a thousand. So this becomes false. And if it is false, so the result of this actually what the result of this is false. So false will be stored in that is small number all right so that's a boolean variable not only that you can actually have you can use it with you can use it with two different uh you can use it with two different uh variables so in this case we have a variable here we have a variable here and then we compare com uh, <laughs> Let me clear all drawing. So we have two variables here. We have a variable speed line and current speed. And I check is current speed greater than the speed limit. I'm sorry, speed limit. 72 is greater than 75. So the result of this is what the result of this condition now is what is true. So this is true. And true will be stored in uh, is speeding. All right. All right, so let's go to the next uh, example. In this case, in this case, what we have, I need to go back here. We're using the not value. So, we're defining a variable called is, is it snowing and it's that it has a value initial value of false and then we say is if if not is snowing is snowing equal false when you say not is snowing this is true so the result of this now this the result of this condition is what the result of this condition is true now because this is false the opposite of that is true because we're using this not condition. So because this is true, we will execute this line, which is, it is not snowing, all right? Okay, so now that's the not statement. If we go to the next 
uh, next slide and let's take a look at the more complex example of an if statement. This one we can use the and conditions and let's take a look at look at it a little bit in more details. So what do we have here? We have two conditions. This is your first condition and this is your second condition. The first condition talks about the temperature, is it greater than or equal to 65? So the result of this condition, either true or false. And then we have another condition also, is the temperature less than or equal to 75? So what do we need to check? So what happens here, 70, we check the value here. Is, it, is 70 greater than 65? Yes, so that's, this is true. This condition is true. And then you check the other condition temperature less than or equal to 75? Yes, because this is 70, so this is true. So what happens here, true and true, because we're using and, remember, for, this con for the result of this to be true, both condition has to be true. So this is true and this is true, so we are okay. So what, we get, what get executed? This get executed. So it says here, print the temperature is just right all right because both conditions has met let me do something a little bit different here let's clear the drawing first and then let's change the value of this to uh instead of 70 now i'm going to make that 60. okay now the temperature is 60. now we need to check we check again this condition is the temperature greater than or equal to 65 no, it is not. So this is this condition now is not true anymore. It's false. So false. And because I'm using and, I don't need to check the other condition. One of them is false. The result is always false. Then what happens? Then we skip and go to the next condition. And then we check the next condition. It says, is this condition, is the temperature, now it's 60, is less than 65? So this condition now is true. And what do we do? We actually execute this part here. It says it is too cold. All right. So that is okay. This is too cold. And based why? Because the first condition was false. And then we check the next condition. The next condition is true. All right. Let's do the last condition here. Let's say instead of 70 now, my mouse is I think all weird. Instead of 70, now it is 80. The temperature is 80, all right? Now, if it is 80, is it greater than or equal to 65? Yes, so this is true. But the second condition is false because it is not, 80 is not less than 75. So we skip and we go to the next condition. Then we check this condition. Is it less than 65? No, it is not. This is also false. So what happens? We skip and we go to the else statement. And the last condition here, else, it says print it is too hot. All right. So that's what happens when you use the if statement. And then and, and what we call it nested if sometimes. All right. Let's look at the next example. The next example is about uh, the or statement. What's the difference between and and or? Or statement is, um, or statement is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is it's, uh, identified as these two vertical bars, right? So what's the difference between this and the other one? This is only, if one of them is true, then this condition takes place. So I have two Boolean variables here. One of them is, the first one is false. The second one is true. But what happens here? If is plugged in, plugged in is false, has battery power, has battery power, but has battery power is true. So this is true, this is false. But because we're using or, this is actually get executed because the result is true. All right, the result is true. Else, we print, oh no, <laughs> this is emoji character, right? 
So that is the difference between or and, and or. One of the condition is true or, on, no, sorry. And both conditions are true or is only one condition that is true. All right, so if we go to the next uh, example, the next example, we're gonna introduce you to something totally different, which is called the Swift statement. It's still control flow, but it is easier to write conditions. And sometimes when you have multiple if conditions, it, be it is better to use this switch statement. The syntax of the if switch statement, you will put the switch, the value that you want to check, and then you have different cases. So let's say case one, this value, case, case uh, two, the, 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 another, uh, uh, this could be different values. So case and value, case and value, case and value, and then the code that you want. If you come from a different programming languages such as C or Java or, uh, or C Sharp, usually we have a break statement after each one of those. So the break statement is not needed in the Swift language, all right? So no need for a break statement. So it checks, it starts from checking the top, it checks the first case, checks the second case, checks the third case, fourth case, and if none of these actually met, it will go to the default case. Let's take a look at an example. So in this example, <clears throat> what we have here, we have a variable called number of wheels, and the value is two here. So these are the cases, switch, the number of wheels, and then we use, this is an integer, so we will use integer values here. So we'll say, is it zero? Then if, if this value is zero, we'll say, there's something wrong. You can't have a bicycle or, uh, or, or uh, a, uh, uh, like a vehicle with zero wheels, all right? Unless it's a drone. So this is uh, the first case. Notice that you will put the case, the number, and then the colon. Then you check, is, it, is the number of wheels is two or is one? You say unicycle is the number of wheels uh, two, then you say bicycle. The number of wheel is three, then tricycle. Four is quad, quad cycle. And if none of these is true, if it's not one of those numbers, we go to the default value, which is, this is a lot of wheels, right? We have a lot of five wheels and it could have five wheels, right? So that, <laughs> that's how we use the switch statement. If you look at the next example, where we have another version of the switch statement. Here we have a character and this character, we can have multiple condition and the same case statement. So in this case, we say switch a character. And then if it is a vowel, and you know the vowel letters are A, E, I, O, U. So if any of those, we say the letter is a character is a vowel. Otherwise, the character is not a vowel. All right. So that is the switch statement again. It simplifies the multiple if, uh, if else uh, statements. And then each of, each of these condition exclusive, that means what? It means you cannot have zero and one at the same level. You cannot have one and two at the same time. It's either one or two. It cannot be both at the same time. And here is the same way. It could be only one of those letters uh, for this to be to, to be to be executed. Otherwise, you have uh, it's not a vowel. You can use with a with an if switch statement. You can use ranges, and this is a nice feature. Remember that condition that we did before about if the temperature is greater than sixty five and less than seventy five. Well, you can easily do that here by putting a range. This would be 65, dot, 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 75. Instead of writing that if conditions, if it's greater than and less than this condition, you can use a case statement easily. 
So again, distance is a variable. Is it between zero and nine inclusive? That means it's zero and nine, yeah? Including zero and nine. Uh, so your destination is too close. If this condition is not true, then we go to the next condition. The next case, is it between zero and uh, 10 and 99? Your destination is a me uh, medium distance. And then at the end, not at the end, if it is 100 to, 1, to 99, that means your destination is from, from here, it's about a kilometer. And finally, if it is not any of these, then your destination is too far. Do you want to travel? All right, so that is, if it's none of these conditions, you will do this. You have different values also. If you want to say, if you don't want to include nine, you can use, let me see the other condition, okay. If you don't want to include nine, you can say zero, 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 dot, dot, dot. But instead of the last dot here, what you can use, you can use less than sign here. So it's zero to less than nine, all right? So that does not include nine, okay, in this case. Okay, so that is the, uh, the switch statement and the different versions of the switch statement. So here's an example. How can we convert this to a switch statement? Hint, they're giving you a hint. You can use n.min. That will give you the minimum number. So what do we do? We say here, you can start with the minimum number to 65. Then the temperature is too cold. Then the next level would be greater between 65 and 75. The temperature is perfect. And the next range, if it is not in these two ranges, it will be too hot. So here's the solution. So for, we say temperature 76, switch temperature, int min is my starting point to 64, it's too cold. Between 65 and 75, it's too hot, it's just right. If it is not any of these, then it's gonna be above 75, which means it is too hot. The last thing we cover here is the trinary uh, operation. So sometimes you want to assign a value based on a condition. So here, if we wanna check which one, which one uh, is greater than the others, A or B, then we say, if A is greater than B, then we say largest equal A, else largest equal B, right? Well, you could do that in an easier fashion. What you do is that you will put the variable name that you want to assign the value to, the condition that you want to check, and question mark, then the first value, if it is true, the second value, if it is false. So let's take a look at the first, the same example that we've done before. So here, instead of having that if statement, we'll say largest is my integer value, my, the, the result value, is A greater than B? A is 15. B is four, so this condition is true. If this is true, then we assign A to largest. Let me use the marker here, the annotation in a minute. So in this case, A will be assigned to largest because this condition is true, right? If we change this values, if we change the numbers, because A is 15 greater than four, so that's correct, the question mark. So we assign A to the largest. If this, can, if this is changed, if we change this to, let's say only one, what will happen now? So is one greater than four? It is not, so this is false. So in this scenario, instead of A is assigned, we will actually assign B to largest and B is, and largest become what, four, all right? So that is the trinary operator. And if we go to the next slide, we need you to go to the lab in lesson four and start working on your lab. Now, what I'm going to do to practice this, we're going to do some exercises in the next video. Uh, 
and that would be the practical part of this lesson.